Hi, my name is Carlos Rodriguez. I am a Sitecore consultant with Arc Systems, and what I want to talk about today is performing A-B testing in Sitecore, and the version of Sitecore I'm going to be focusing on will be the Sitecore 8 series. So that will be my uh, point of view and how I plan to discuss this. Okay, in terms of the agenda, um, I see this being a three-part series in terms of the videos I'll be creating. So in part one, I do want to talk about value versus traffic and goals and even go through a quick demo of how to create goals. Um, it's pretty important because if you don't know what's involved in the creation of goals, it's pretty hard to test. So uh, I think the creating of these goals are so important that I'm going to talk about them first before we even talk about the actual testing itself. But in part two of this video, um, we will actually go through the why of testing, um, the testing cycle, AB versus multivariate testing, page testing, and other points where testing is concerned. And then in the part three video, I'll actually go through a demo involving an AB test, including how to set up an AB test, and we'll look at an existing one to see how we can examine the results of that test, which may lead to how uh, we're going to update the site based on the feedback that we're getting. Okay, so without further ado, I want to talk about value versus traffic. And the reason I want to talk about this is that even before you can think about testing, we got to find a way to determine the winner. <laughs> and the way to determine the winner is to look at the value certain activities are contributing to your site rather than just the traffic showing up to the site. So to give you an example of what I mean, traffic is great. Don't get me wrong. I think it's good if you have a lot of visitors coming to your site. But these days, um, Certainly, uh, having websites is about more than just conveying information. Um, E-commerce has grown by leaps and bounds over the last uh, few years, and that was, which has made digital marketing also more important because uh, now with the growth of e-commerce, people are purchasing stuff off your sites rather than just going to your sites for information. So with that being the case, it's not enough to know how many people are showing up to your site, even though that information is certainly readily available in Sitecore. Um, what we got to be able to determine is whether when these people show up to your site, are they doing the activities you want them to do? Ultimately, the ones that put money in your pocket if you're the one selling the goods. So let's say we have a booking a holiday site. And it's great that people are visiting the homepage to the degree that they are. The only problem is when they go to the homepage, yeah, some bookings are happening. But certainly if I'm in digital marketing, I want to see if we can find ways to increase that percentage from what it is right now. I happen to notice that when they go to the holiday page, the percentage which leads to an actual booking is 70% versus the 30% you're gaining from the home page. So um, certainly from the perspective of what's important to me, which is getting people to book vacations, I certainly want to take advantage of what the holiday page is doing versus what the home page is doing. So if nothing else, I would have a link between the home page and the holiday page so I can increase the traffic going to that page and as a result increase the dollars going coming into my pocket if I'm the one selling these vacation packages. Another way to look at this um, is that let's say I have two booking sites. Question becomes do I want to be site one or do I want to be site two? Site one gets a lot of visitors but the conversion rate for the bookings is not that high. So in the end you're not making all that much money. However in site two, even though they don't have quite as much traffic, the conversion rate for the traffic that does show up is rather high. So as a result they're getting more bookings overall which leads to more money in the pocket of the organization running site two. So the question becomes which site would I rather be? So as you can see from a digital marketing perspective it's not enough to address traffic even though traffic in its own right is important. Uh, you also got to address whether the, when that traffic does appear, are we doing what we should be doing from a conversion rate perspective to get the end result that we want as a result of this site? If I'm a retail site, whether I'm selling books, gadgets, or vacation packages, certainly my goal from a digital marketing perspective, even above traffic, is making sure that I'm getting a high enough conversion rate so that I'm actually making money off of these vacation packages or anything else that I'm selling with my customer base. So this conversion rate wants it being rather important. So now the question becomes, how can I effectively measure this off a Sitecore site? Okay, I'm going to go right to the end of the slide because the way that Sitecore does this is through what we call an engagement value. So every time your site or your user interacts with a site, if the proper items are in place and they're linked to the proper things, then you can actually measure the engagement value associated for that visitor for any visit they make to the site.
Now, typically, you'll have a set of what we call goals in Sitecore, which sets the engagement value for that activity when it's performed on the site. And typically, you have a set of micro goals like downloading a brochure or making contact with individuals in the organization. And then you have the macro goal, which is the number one thing that needs to happen on this site in order for us to remain in business, which in this case would be booking a vacation. So typically what we do is we assign point values to each of these activities, typically the ones which with the higher correlation to the end result that we're after gets a higher engagement value. And certainly the activity that puts money in our pockets gets the highest engagement value. But whether you perform one action or a set of actions, ultimately you add them together and then whatever the, that amount comes out to in terms of points represents the engagement value of that visit between the visitor or the user and um, the site uh, that you're working with. So certainly the end result is we want high engagement values because that gives an indication that the pre person visiting the site are performing the type of activities which in the end will make the organization profitable and remain in business. I want to go to the next slide because on the next slide I want to give you a sense of well how do I come up with this point value system um, which allows me uh, to determine how I evaluate the engagement of a user to my site to determine what activities should I invest my energies in. Well here's an example on this slide of a chart which I would use to set the initial point system for the activities I want to track to determine if we're actually getting vacations booked. So starting from the bottom, visiting the home page gets five points, downloading a brochure gets 15 points, subscribing to our monthly newsletter, let's say, gets gives me 25 points, and then if they contact us directly, they get 50 points. And then if they actually book the vacation, where there's results of one or multiple of these, that's a full 100 points. Okay, so what determines these values? Well, what determines these values is what I perceive to be the correlation between the activity and the likelihood that it results in the macro goal, being booking a vacation. So direct contact gets 50 points because I'm saying that if they contact me directly, there's a very good chance I'll get them to book that vacation. So that's why I want to assign a 50 points. While the reason of visiting the homepage is five is because what I'm saying in a nutshell is that if they visit the homepage and that's the only activity they do, then the likelihood that they're gonna book a vacation just based on that it's not that high at all, so I'm only going to assign five points to it. So if they visit the home page, you get five points for that. Um, and then the idea being that as I measure and analyze the resulting engagement values, I want to see the correlation between the activities they perform and whether it results in the macro goal, which in this case is booking a vacation. So I'm saying that if they if if they uh, if they only have an engagement value of five, they probably visited the home page, but that was it. But um, certainly, I want to see based on when they visit the home page, how great is the correlation between that and booking vacation, and I want to see that for all these micro activities. Okay, because um, the more likely performing an action leads to the major goal being achieved, the more the more likely that when I do adjust this graph that I'm going to give it a higher engagement value reflecting the higher correlation. So one thing I do want to make clear is that this is not meant to be set in stone. This is this could be my first attempt at identifying what actions will lead to booking vacation, but over time as I analyze the results, I might find that maybe visiting the home page is doing a better job of getting me that booking than downloading a brochure. And then if that's the case, then I would switch these two around and adjust their values accordingly. So the idea being that we have to start from somewhere from a marketing standpoint, but then over time, as we evaluate the results, we may adjust this based on which activities actually lead to booking a vacation. And the more significant is the correlation between the activity and the vacation booking, the higher its engagement value should turn out to be. So in the end, as I'm analyzing the results of engagement values, uh, if it's above 100, it should mean that a booking took place. Um, but you know, if I'm getting 150s, then I'm going to be most likely as an indication of a correlation between direct contact and booking vacation, while the lower 100s would mean that one of these lower activities led to the booking of a vacation. But certainly from a marketing standpoint, it's my job to analyze that and then decide how is that correlation working out and should any of this be adjusted based on that.
Okay, so with that being said, what I want to do now is go through the demo of creating a goal. So I'm going to go to Sitecore, and I'm going to log in from the very beginning. And then once I log in, uh, I'm in the Sitecore Experience Platform Launchpad, and where I'm going to now is the Marketing Control Panel under Marketing Applications, because that's where my goals get created. I'm here as an administrator, so I have access to all my tools, so I am able to do this as an administrator, but if you're set up as a, with a marketing profile, you should have access to these tools as well. So I'm going to go to the Marketing Control Panel. And I want to go through the process of creating a goal. The marketing control panel is a content tree structure. That's not all that different from the content editor itself. As is the case with everything in Sitecore, goals are items too. And to create a goal, I would right click on the goals parent, click on insert, and then I can either create a goal, or if I have a lot of these goals and I want to organize them into folder structures, I could certainly create either a common folder or a goal category folder. There's not much difference between the goal category folder and the common folder outside of the color scheme for the most part. So, But it's there if you want to organize your goals into folders. I'll click on the goal item because that's what I want to create. And let's say I want to create one for visiting the home page. Okay, so I'll name it that and click on OK. And when I do, it'll create the item. Here it is. And the most important thing to me under the data section is giving it a point system. So in my example, I gave it five points. So that's what I'm going to give it. Um, note that by default, it gives you zero points. There are actually situations I've heard of where people don't want to give you credit towards the major goal by declaring the points to be zero, but they still want to track the activity in the reports. So they'll give it a point system of zero, but it'll still be a goal they can attach to an item. They just don't want to give it any additional credit towards achieving the major goal, which in our case is booking the vacations. Okay, So you do have that option if you want to go that route. All right. For now, I'm just going to focus on performing that activity. At this point, I can save my goal. And then what I want you to notice is that goals go through a workflow in Sitecore. Since in my gutter, I'm tracking workflow activity, I could see that it's now in the, in the draft mode for this goal in workflow. And before I can use it on an item, I have to deploy the goal. Deploy is the same thing as publishing, where you're promoting it to a place where it would then have access to the live site as well. So with that being the case, what I would have to do is click on this icon as one way of promoting or deploying the goal. I would deploy it. I can give it a comment if I want. Goal is ready and go ahead and click on OK. And once I do that, then the goal is ready to be assigned and used with an item. So I'm going to give it a moment to save. It just did that. So now what I'm going to do is use my Launchpad icon to go back to the Launchpad. And then I want to go to the Content Editor for a second. Because uh, creating the goal is not enough. What you got to do now is assign it to an actual item. So I'm going to navigate to the Events item. Because let's say this is my home page for events, and I want to associate it with this. What I would do after this is go to the Analyze tab, click on the Goals command, and then here I see all my goals. I can assign the goal by clicking on its checkbox, and note that I can assign more than one goal to any particular item, as long as I'm willing to have it collect that engagement value collectively and have it re represented in the proper report. I'll go ahead and click on OK. It will assign that goal to this item. And now, as you can imagine, before all this actually takes place, I still have to publish this out. So I'll go ahead and do a smart publish. And once I publish this all out to the live database or web database or the CD environment, however you want to call it, then that item will be associated with that goal in the live environment. And now, anytime you visit this item live, you will get five additional engagement value points associated with that visit to this site. And that's what's involved with assigning a goal, creating a goal, and then assigning it to an item. Okay, so I want to make that clear because before we can talk about testing, we have to create goals and make sure that they're available um, as, a means, as a means of testing. Otherwise, we don't know how effective our activity is. So this is pretty much the end of the first video. Um, on the next video, I'm going to focus my attention more on actual testing. And then if there's time, we'll do a little demo. But otherwise, if not, we will leave it for the third video. All right, thank you so much. And can't wait to see you at the next video.